I've just received a phone call from one of my close comrades, Comrade Supra Mahomu Pelu, informing me that on social media, there's a letter from the National Disciplinary Committee of the African National Congress making the rounds, saying that I've been expelled by the National Disciplinary Committee from the African National Congress. I have not received that letter personally. This letter was simply sent out into the public domain by that kangaroo call that called themselves the National Disciplinary Committee. It is utterly unacceptable that any person who is personally affected, as I am by such a ridiculous decision by the National Disciplinary Committee of the ANC, must hear about this on social media, and there's not even the most basic decency to first ensure that I'm informed about this vindictive decision of the National Disciplinary Committee. During the last year and more, I've been subjected to persecution by the National Disciplinary Committee of the African National Congress on the basis of me having said at Nkandla on the 4th of July, 2021, and on several other occasions, that I believe acting on behalf of Umkontuisis Ve Military Veterans Association and speaking as the national spokesperson of MKMBA, that the decision of the Constitutional Court to have sentenced President Jacob Zuma without a proper court case was illegal, and that it indicates that our judiciary are captured. This was a decision that was taken formally by the National Executive Committee of MKMVA. And as the national spokesperson of NKMBA, I was given the instruction to travel to Nkandla and to deliver that message to President Jacob Zuma and also to hold a public press conference and make the views of NKMBA known. I carried out my duties diligently and did exactly that. In the meantime, I noted that there were several senior members of the African National Congress, which included the chairperson of the ANC, Wede Mantash, also Comrade Lindiwe Susulu, even Fakile Mbalula, and also many other members of the ANC's NEC, who had made stronger statements over the years of stating that our judiciary are acting wrongly and that they are captured. Yet none of these persons have been charged and challenged for those utterances. But I had to be singled out by the National Disciplinary Committee. I had to be subjected to disciplinary hearings that went on over and over without the National Disciplinary Committee having been able to get the administrative act together, nor to present the evidence as it was to be led by witnesses. They just continue to insist that I had acted in contravention of a decision of the ANC's NEC, a decision that they never probably qualified, never gave full expression to. It was evident that throughout I was being subjected to a kangaroo court with a predetermined decision having been taken. It was evident that there was never any intention to provide me with a proper hearing to allow justice to prevail. Under the circumstances, I will obviously have no other option but to immediately appeal 
this ridiculous, vindictive sentence of suspending me from the African National Congress. This is not the ANC I know. This is not the African National Congress that I joined at the age of 19 years in Botswana, for which I dedicated my whole life, sacrificed my youth, have seen my own family rejecting me, for which I served a 10-year sentence in the Pretoria Maximum Security Prison, having been sentenced for high treason. And before I was sentenced, for which I was arrested, detained in solitary confinement for a long time, and tortured to the point where I've lost most of my hearing. I've always been loyal to the ideals with which I joined the African National Congress, the ideals for freedom and for full liberation of the people of South Africa, the understanding that that liberation is not just liberation from racial oppression, that it is also liberation from economic exploitation and oppression. I've learned that understanding from no one else more important than the most and longest serving president of the African National Congress, Comrade Oliver Reginald Tum. I've dedicated my life to that ideal. I've sacrificed much. I have never betrayed the African National Congress, nor have I ever even under the worst possible conditions, betrayed any of my comrades. When I was tortured in John Foster Square, when I was threatened that I will be killed, when blood was running from my nose and my ears, and I was stumbling around while security police were bashing me around, I never betrayed anyone. And yet today I've been to be treated in the most unacceptable, disregarding fashion. My comradeship is being trashed simply because I'm not prepared to accept the unacceptable. I'm not prepared for the African National Congress to betray the majority of black and especially African South Africans. I'm not prepared to accept a president who is evidently an agent of white monopoly capitalism. I'm not prepared to accept my country going to ruin and my beloved liberation movement being destroyed. This is the tragedy that I've seen playing out in front of my very eyes. In recent months, I had to see how Cyril Ramaphosa is being protected by the state security apparatus, by the National Prosecuting Authority, by the South African Police Service, and even by the acting public protector. We had to fight step by step just to insist that Cyril Ramaphosa, like every other citizen in this country, must be subjected to equality before the law that he cannot be regarded as being above the law. In recent days, we had to see the spectacle of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress failing to keep Cyril Ramaphosa accountable, failing to take simple decisions about putting the ANC first and making sure that Ramaphosa will vacate his position as president of the African National Congress because of the crimes that he is being alleged to have done, because of the infamy that he brought to the African National Congress and to the South African government, because of the manner that he has mismanaged this economy to turn it into the most unequal society in the world, destroying our state-owned enterprises selling off for nothing the South African airways, destroying ESCOM, 
committing us to creating an environment of energy insecurity and selling our coal off to the Western nations while we have to live with load shedding of the highest level. These are the circumstances we have faced. And despite that, the toothless, weak National Executive Committee of the ANC failed to take any significant action against Saro Ramaphosa. They failed to remove him as president of the African National Congress. At the last meeting, they could not even accept and adopt the report of the Integrity Committee of the ANC. They just kicked it forward to the 55th National Conference. It was always evident that the decision had already been taken that I have to be expelled because I'm not keeping quiet, because I'm speaking my mind, because I'm challenging evil, exploitation and corruption on a daily basis without standing back without cowering away, I stand my ground. I've stood my ground al alone at the National Executive Committee meetings of the African National Congress in recent days. I stood there with a very simple but very important message, a message which should have been drummed home within the NEC of the ANC, that Ramaphosa must go. But instead of Ramaphosa going, I have to receive on social media this totally insulting letter that I have now been expelled by the National Disciplinary Committee of the African National Congress. I must hasten to add that this is a National Disciplinary Committee that heard me without even one single member of the National Executive being on that committee. A number of minions sitting there, some of them not even having been a thought in their mother's heads when I had already joined the African National Congress and dedicated my life to the liberation struggle. When I was tortured, when I was imprisoned, they were nowhere. But today they want to come and judge me. They want to come and pass a predetermined sentence against me. They want to tell me after I dedicated and sacrificed my life to the liberation of this country and to the African National Congress and to Mkontuwe Sizwe, that I must be expelled from the ANC. I will fight this. I will not accept it. I will fight it to the hilt. I've already instructed my fellow comrade and legal representative, Comrade Matthews Poza, to immediately file for an appeal against this ridiculous sentence. As you can see, I'm angry. The words that come from my mouth and out of my soul are shaking with anger because this is the most disrespectful, disregarding thing that one can ever imagine. To be treated like this, to be humiliated like this, to be subjected to a kangaroo court, to be persecuted by minions, people who are not even close to the history of one's sacrifices for the liberation of our country, to be treated like dirt by nobodies simply because they've been empowered by a mafia gangster such as Cyril Ramaphosa. I will not allow this to go unchallenged, nor will I allow it to go unpunished. I will fight it to the hilt. I will appeal this ridiculous, vindictive, predetermined sentence. I will fight it in my public statements. I will fight it in my public appearances. I will fight it everywhere. 
I am a member of the African National Congress. I will never be removed as a member of the African National Congress. I have loved and fought for the African National Congress. My blood is black, green and gold. I have sacrificed my life. I'm prepared to lay my life down for this liberation, but I will never and I want you to hear this, members of the National Disciplinary Committee. I want you to hear this, members of the National Executive Committee, the outgoing National Executive Committee of the ANC. And I want you, especially you, Soro Ramaphosa, to hear this. No one, no one can expel me from the ANC. I have fought and sacrificed and dedicated my life to the African National Congress. I am more ANC than you in your betraying, in your sellout body can ever be. Now the fight is on and I will take it to the utmost, to the hilt. I will fight every step of the way. I will take every necessary legal action. I will take every necessary public action. I will take every necessary political action. But if you think you're going to find me cowering, if you think you're going to insult me by sending me letters of dismissal on public and social media, you've got something coming. You don't know me. I am a fighter. You've squared for a fight. Now you've got the fight. Aikale, Aluta, Continua.